everybody. Welcome to Breaking the Rules. My name is Casey Dempster and I'm here with my co-host Ray Lowe and we have a fascinating guest to talk to you about some really exciting things. But I wanted to start out by uh, talking a little bit about the name of our show. Um, our mission is to um, help people to understand that just because things have always been done a certain way doesn't mean that we have to continue doing it that way. Um, oftentimes we're faced with change in our lives whether it's coming from inside of us because we know we need to make a change or if it's coming from outside influences and many people are not comfortable with change it, it scares them it just makes them very uncomfortable so if you have control over what is happening oftentimes it makes the change easier for you so that's what we're trying to get across to you and I have a great quote today that really supports that and it's from and I'm going to have to hold this up um, a gentleman by the name of Ashok Kalarakal. I hope I'm putting the accent in the right place. And he said, if you do not see light at the end of the tunnel, consider it an opportunity to create an opening yourself wherever you want. And um, I like that because, you know, if you don't see that light, you've got to get out of the tunnel, so you have to figure out how you're going to do it on your own and make it fit you. So that's where we're going today. Yeah, and if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got, you right? You finally learned that. Well, it took a long time. <laughs> it took a long time. Uh, but at least I can pronounce the name of the person that made that quote anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. so we have a great guest today, and this is a guest that is particularly near and dear to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I go out every once in a while and I attempt to take pictures, and every once in a while I think I might be on my road to being a photographer. And we have with us an absolute pro, one of the best ever. He's a Sigma pro, and he can explain what that means to us. But Roman? Yes. Thanks for being with us this oh, morning. Thank you, and, thank you. And, and why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and how the heck you've gotten in this photography business? Well, uh, my name is Roman Kurachek, and uh, I always thank joke you. about that it's called Roman Smith, just like it's spelled. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I didn't start out in photography. I went to art school out of high school. I uh, was not particularly fond of school. I didn't tell that to my sons, you know. You can't tell that to your sons. Uh, and then I got into being a union carpenter of all strange paths. Mm -hmm. um, my wife of now almost 30 years bought me a Canon AE-1 30 years ago. Uh. And that changed pretty much everything because I started to get into the photography. Mm -hmm. I joined the camera club because like you said, you think you're good. And then I went to a local camera club and they had a competition and I said, oh, Jesus, I need a lot to learn. Yeah. So when I took that approach, then I said to myself, okay, uh, how do I get better? So I kept asking two mentors that I had in the club, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And I learned from them. So I think part of my art background came into play mm -hmm. though because of the compositions and everything else. And then in the camera club and through reading and everything else, I learned the technical aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of trial and error. You know, it's not just like click, oh, I'm, you know, there. Uh, you make a lot of mistakes, but I, I don't call them mistakes. Part of the thing that we were talking about is, especially in digital, take the picture, look at it and say, hey, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. And learn from it. Because like scientists do multiple experiments, right. consider it an experiment that you're doing and say, okay, I can change this, I can fix this, much quicker pace now in digital photography. Right, because you get instant feedback. Right, so learn from it. Don't just say, oh, this is bad. What did, what did I do, what can I fix? Mm -hmm. Because in the old film or slide days, you had to wait two weeks for your slides to come back <laughs> right. and say, okay, where did I make my mistake? Right. And out it went. And you don't remember because you didn't take the notes. You didn't have the metadata and things right. like that. Right, right. Good. Right. So how do we get from being a carpenter <laughs> to in, being a photographer? In Elizabeth, New Jersey. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, uh, that's an easy one. Sunday nights, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. <laughs> I remember sitting in front of that TV, black and white TV, watching the wildebeest cross the Serengeti, watching all these stuff. And as a little kid, I said, oh, I'm gonna do that. 
And then my parents had a place up in the Catskills, mm -hmm. you know, eight acres of land that they had with my uncles and stuff, trailer. And we used to run around in the woods, see the wildlife out in the woods. And that's where I fell in love with nature. Mm -hmm. uh, just climbing trees, stuff kids do. Seeing raccoons, deer, picking up bugs and things like that. So after getting into enjoying the outdoors, I got into camping and backpacking. Uh, part of my wedding vows were, you know, another city girl were that we're going to go backpacking and hiking, you know, <laughs> as part of the thing. Because it was actually rather inexpensive to mm -hmm. do that instead of hotel rooms and right. everything else. Mm -hmm. So we visited our national parks and I remember coming back and saying, how do I get better? And that, again, joined the camera club and then I really embraced it. That's where I said, okay, I have a goal here to visit these beautiful places, rather inexpensive, like I said, camping a lot of times or half the time. So people would go to the Jersey Shore and pay lots of money for the week at the Jersey Shore. I'd go for two, three weeks out to Yellowstone or Arches and things like that and be able to spend less money. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was the embracing of the outdoors and then camera in hand, how do I get better? Right, right. You know? Well, I can comment that I was in Yellowstone last week, and it was 27 degrees below zero, <laughs> not counting wind gel. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there is a price to pay, and you have to love what you're doing to do this, right? Absolutely. I, I tell people, there's no such thing as an overnight success. I've been at this almost 30 years, mm -hmm. and my Roman with Roman Tour Company's 15 years now. So somebody asked me, oh, that's cool. You run photography workshops and tours. I said, yeah, it's really cool. I'm a 10 year overnight success. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it took me 10 years to finally feel yeah. like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, right, you know, right. kind of thing. So can you explain to me, Ray, um, earlier in the introduction said that you were a Sigma pro. Right. For a neophyte like me, what, is, what does that mean? Okay, so there's camera manufacturers, everybody knows Canon, Nikon, Sony, and all these other manufacturers. Sigma makes lenses for all Canon and Nikon lenses, all of them, uh, some for Sony, that are more affordable for the hobbyist, the enthusiast, because if you look at some of the name brand, as we call them, lenses, they're two, three times the price of what you're going to pay for a Sigma lens. And I got into uh, Sigma Pro, actually was introduced by a Canon Explorer of Light to the head of the Pro department, which mm -hmm. was totally unbelievable. Yeah, tell us that story. <laughs> All right, so I'm in Florida um, having my table, Roman with Roman table, TV playing with my images, and they're having some kind of giveaway, and I see this guy, George Lepp, famous photographer, one of my idols in nature photography, and he's standing there looking at the TV, and Canon's right across the aisle for me, you know, and he says, are those your pictures? I go, yeah, and he goes, what lens do you use? So I go, well, or what camera? Everybody asks, what cameras do you use? So at that time, it was the uh, Canon 1D Mark III or something like that body, but I said, I use Sigma lenses. That's the Sigma 3-800, their flagship lens. He goes, that's the 3-800? He goes, yeah. He goes, does the head of the pro department know that you're here? Because he's here somewhere for Sigma. And I go, no. He goes, grabs him by the arm, pulls him back, and says, you should be talking to this guy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I got to be a Sigma pro from a Canon Explorer of Light, small world. And I find out that the head of Sigma pro department started the Canon Explorer of Light program 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we think it's a big business, but we all know each other, you know, even in the field, most of the pros. Mm -hmm. OK. So you go around the country lecturing and being sponsored by Sigma right. at various events and things like right. that. Okay, so now that we know that you're good, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me ask a couple of questions. I, I think I think you know everybody would like to be a photographer to some extent. Yes. So you know, given that we're not all going to be pros, and today you can take pretty good pictures with a lot of good stuff that's out there. Right. How does one start? You know, what are the important things to think about? Uh, I always tell people, don't quit your day job. Okay. <laughs> so that union carpenter job provided me with something most people don't have, is I could take vacation, so to speak, to go to Yellowstone Arches or wherever it is I wanted to go and not lose my job. Plus, I had health benefits. I had, you know, decent salary when I was working. 
Uh, I had two sons. They're 24 and 22. And so go back 15 years, they're young. Mm -hmm. So I was on the road last year, 220, 230 days out of the year. So you got to make choices. Of, uh, am I going to sacrifice you know, my sons or knowing my sons to a certain extent that amount of time? I have a wonderful wife also who has a job. Long suffering, <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a kept man, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to, you know? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I started out slowly because I also had no clue about the business. So when you start saying to yourself, okay, how do I do this? How do I go about it? I started out saying I'm only taking four people because I wanted to keep it intimate and in the teaching environment. So when you start saying to yourself, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to drive people? Insurance, things that I just don't oh, know right. about, I learned slowly along the way. So it wasn't jump all in. You know, okay. type of thing. So I'm new at this, okay, okay. and I want to start, what do I do, go out and buy a camera? Yeah, well, you have to, you know, yeah. it is one of those things, but nobody ever told you that once you get into this hobby, it's a money pit. My friends always <laughs> say, you know, bring the wheelbarrow full of money before you come. But you have to learn. There's so much educational mm -hmm. resources. I have YouTube videos through my website. Mm -hmm. Um, you can go and learn a lot online, which we didn't really have that much, mm -hmm. and learn. I know my camera in the dark. You hand me a camera, how to change the f-stop, shutter speed, all these things right. that I know in the dark. Right. Because we will be in the dark when we do yep. night right. photography. Yep. And then you do that. So it's, you know, you got to learn your equipment. It's like, you know, as a union carpenter, I knew my hammer, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so you try to learn, see what you like to do. You're going to make mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, you know, just go slowly. Don't jump all in. I think most people who jump all in tend to not make it because you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about this, but we have to go to break. Okay. So uh, don't go away. Stay tuned, and we'll be back very quickly because this is really <laughs> great stuff. All right. Thanks. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit, and we'll take it as a compliment. Because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within, that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, 
we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand. Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours, have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you. Welcome back, everybody, uh, to Breaking the Rules. I'm Casey Dempster, here with Ray Lowe, and our fascinating guest, Roman Kurachek, yeah, very who's good. a professional nature photographer. And um, as you might have heard, we've been talking about um, a lot of the work that he's done. And um, at this point, we'd like to maybe put up some of your photographs. Sure. And if you will look at the monitor, we, if there's something really particular about one, we can um, talk about it. OK, so I this year, just actually a couple of weeks ago, I released my wildlife ebook on photographing wildlife. And that includes birds in flight, which mm -hmm. a lot of people think challenging, but with the new gear available to us, it's not as tough as you would think, but it does require practice. Yeah. I always tell people, hey, you took piano lessons for a week. Did they invite you to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> There's a couple of hundred thousand images uh, behind that behind one that. right there. Right. So well, you know that when you take a good picture, it's always because you have a great camera, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I've heard that so many times, you know, that, oh, you have great gear. That's why you take great pictures. I say, well, you have a stove in your house, right? Are you a world-class chef? <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you can't you oh. can't eliminate the technique, the practice, the learning. Practice. And then the camera helps a little bit. Right, too. and and you continue to hopefully learn. Look at yeah, yeah look at these that's handheld with one of the new Sigma 150 to 600 on a boat. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah. So my wife hates this because I'm going to get it into this segment, but. <laughs> I drink beer for good hand-holding technique. Look at that, <laughs> that's perfect right there, you know? So, uh, you know, all kidding aside, there, there's a lot of learning involved in that, but I take clients on these trips, you know, mm -hmm. four people, and most of them are elderly, I'm gonna say 60s on up, and they get these type of images, not this one over in New <laughs> York. That, you know, that's hanging out of a helicopter. That's wow. something new. That was my 50th birthday present to myself. How oh, cool wow. is that? Uh, and what happened in this one, this one technically, I said, all right, I want to go up in a helicopter for my 50th birthday with one of my friends at night. And then it's like, okay, doors, how do you do that? Yeah. So I looked at some of my fireworks images, came back with some numbers, Good to have friends that are pros. So I call up one of my friends in Pennsylvania, Bob Chris. I said, Bob, here's my settings. Is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Yeah. It did. So it, it's interesting that you can ask and figure out. So that's that whole learning from other things mm -hmm. and th uh, things like that. I love macro photography. This is just watch parts because uh, that's something you could do at home. Yeah. You don't have to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people, I said, where we live, flowers are available 365 days a year, anytime. So you go to the supermarket and buy flowers. So you can bring them. So I buy flowers for my wife, and I'm sticking <laughs> to that story, <laughs> so I could photograph them. And then you're keeping your skills sharp as mm -hmm. you're doing this. Because in the wintertime, most people, unless you're trekking around in the real coat, put their camera gear down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking for something to photograph all the time. And while mm -hmm. it may not apply to bird photography, say, I'm still comfortable with my settings, my gear, where to turn the dials and everything mm -hmm. else like that. Mm -hmm. So practice, practice, practice. You know, before we go too far, your website is Roman with Roman. Right, no G, Roman okay. with Roman .com. Roman with Roman. And there are many, many more of these images. Do we have yeah. any more up there? Do we have any of the night sky? Oh, uh, here's oh, the wolf this one. Is good this one. is the one we were talking about. So I've been to Yellowstone 26 times wow. by myself and on my workshops. And I've never seen wolves close enough to photograph. They've always been little specks on the horizon, even with the big lenses. 
So my friend and I, I'm getting ready to go home. I stayed a couple of days at my friend's house and we're driving in on an overcast day and I see a black spot right by the side of the road. And I thought it was a bear at first and I go, wolves, we're running to get our camera gear out, you know, <laughs> get it out as fast as we can. They crossed the street, five of them. Wow. My best picture was taking a picture across of a woman taking a picture of a me with the wolf <laughs> in the road. So you don't give up. Yeah. So the crowd yeah. builds, everybody scatters. We pull off in an area, my friend and I, and we say, okay, we know they're there. Mm -hmm. And we wind up finding them and photographing all alone in Yellowstone for three hours. Wow. But my friend's a little nervous. He's like, well, you know. Yeah, they eat you. They, they, they yeah. eat you. <laughs> yeah. Do you have bear spray? I don't believe in bear spray. I'll taste like spicy chicken. So for <laughs> me, it's like, no. So, but we go to the national park store and buy a can of pepper spray, but I have cell phone signal. So of course I call my wife, I go, hun, hun, if you never hear from me again, get the two 64 gig cards out of the bag. <laughs> wolves, wolves. <laughs> She's I'm like, sure what are you doing? I go, did that. you not hear me? <laughs> wolves, wolves. Well, you know, there are a couple of things I want to make sure, Roman with Roman, yeah. okay? And there are tons of these pictures up there. Yes. You can get an idea, but there's more up there too, because, uh, you know, we know you're a photographer, we know you're a pro, and we know you're one of the best, but you're a teacher too. Right. And what's more important here? I'm starting to transition more into the teacher. The Roman with Roman tours were always that way, and that's why I designed them to be small. But now that I'm lecturing more out there in the field, it's as fulfilling when people come up to me and say, oh my God, you know, you made it clear for me and I got it and you helped me. Uh, a couple of years ago, they videotaped me uh, at a presentation at B&H and it's online, one's on bird photography, over 200,000 hits on it because they're educational. For me, it's giving back to my mentors who taught me. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel that teaching may one day replace photography but the photography keeps my skills sharp oh, yeah. and allows me to push the envelope. So when I did night photography originally, I wrote the book in 2011 on how to photograph the Milky Way and stuff like that. I have adapted new techniques because of new rules at the National Parks of Light Painting. So I'm constantly learning by doing photography mm -hmm. and pushing myself. Mm -hmm and then sharing it with others. Right. So I have blogs and other things like that, but the, the YouTube videos now, I tell people, go online. You could see a lot of these videos if you can't make it out or whatever and learn from them. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's really important to learn from a master. I, every time I go out and take pictures and I learn. Right. And when you're with a pro, it's incredible what you can learn. Right. So I, I think there are several things here. Uh, Go to Roman, right. Roman with Roman. Right. Uh, go to the YouTube channel. Take a look at some of right. the stuff that's there. Go on a trip. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the workshops, I've done your homework. I, I, I know what time sunrise is. I know where to be standing. I know where to be doing these things. Mm -hmm. So I've done the homework for you. And then on top of it, because, you know, listen, I'm not knocking the bigger tours because they're doing a different thing. But for me, the educational aspect of it is we're sitting this close to each other all the time. Right. And I'm telling you, okay, here's my settings, here's my comp beauty of digital, here's my composition, this is what it's doing. So it makes it much more intimate where you're not afraid. And sometimes people get afraid of asking in a big group environment a question. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, oh, it's a stupid question. They always start out, it's a stupid question. No, it's not a stupid question. I didn't roll out of bed and get here yesterday yeah. Yeah. you know okay. it, it yeah. was a long path yeah. of learning yeah. so ask questions don't be afraid and one of the things that i want to mention about camera clubs they're not all created equal but be a participant ask don't be afraid say do what i did all those years ago how'd you do that how'd you do that mm -hmm. and that way 
in a relatively inexpensive environment, then you say, okay, hey, I went Roman with Roman. You want to go Roman yeah. with Roman. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. And I'm We're all sorry. done, huh? I okay. have to cut you off. <laughs> we, are, we are at the end of our time, okay. and I obviously we could have gone on for hours. So thank you so much for being with us, Roman. Thank you. And um, oh. I would invite everybody I'll shake to... Your hand. Yeah, well, uh, she didn't say it. <laughs> She's tune a, in again next week with Breaking the Rules. And... Um, you know, consider whipping out that camera and starting to learn how to do some things. YouTube, RomanWithRoman.com, and um, we'll have a lot more interesting photographers come in the future from that. All right, thank cool. you. Thank you. Cool. Thanks much, Ron. Thank you. Thank you.